Hello everybody and welcome to Wine Library TV. I am your host, Gary Vaynerchuk. So, Customer Appreciation Day 2. I asked for some wines. I went a different direction yesterday. I took a couple of shots for it. But today we're coming in with the wines and I'm really excited about it. We've got four great wines to taste today and so that's what I'm going to do because that's uh, what we do. So, wine number one for Tim F. Here you go buddy. 2004 Etude Pinot Noir. Etude has long been one of my favorite wineries in all of California. Uh, the 94 Cabernet was, for a while, my favorite wine of all time. So, I'm a big, big, big fan of their product. I've been a huge fan of the last couple of vintages of this Pinot. I've not had the 04 yet, and so let's see what's going on. Nice cherry nose, very similar to the other vintages. Nice complexity, a little bit, a little bit shallow on the uh, finish, a little bit thinner than I remember some of the prior vintages. Thirty-five to forty-dollar bottle of Pinot Noir, I would like to show a little bit more, comparing it to maybe the uh, Chasseur that we had a couple of uh, episodes ago. No comparison. I find it a little bit light, a little bit underwhelming. Nice cherry flavors, nice integration, well-made wine, good winemaking techniques, but um, not doing it for me. So, Tim, as much as I'd like to say it was great, it's definitely, to me, not anywhere close to the 03 effort. So I'm going to say pass. Let's move on. Chris R. Here you go, buddy. Chris R. and a couple other people as well. Catherine Kennedy, 2003, Lateral. Now, the Lateral is a blend of Merlot, Cab Franc, Cabernet, a little Petit Verdot, uh, as well, 25 Cab and Cab Franc, 47% Merlot. So, um, real classic Saint Emilion blend, you know, very Bordeaux like in their approach to this. This is the 03 vintage. Nice complexity on the nose, some good richness. I like the nose actually. Blueberry black currant flavor uh, on the on the palate. It's rich. It's nice. A little bit of licorice. Solid bottle of wine for thirty bucks. Not bad. I don't know. I'm trying to get into it. I'm gonna have to say pass on this as well. I'm not really that fond of it. It's got good complexity. It has nice firm tannins. I don't know, it just seems kind of one-dimensional. I don't feel that there's that much going on with the wine. And, um, and for that reason, more than anything else, it's, there's nothing really flawed with the wine. It's just not interesting. So, let's move on. Cane Concept, 2002. 84% cab, a little bit of blend of uh, three other grapes. Again, Bordeaux style. Um, really, really interesting wine. Give it a little bit of a rinse. Cane has long made some of the best wines in all of California. The Cane 5 has long been a very sought after cult wine status wine, so this should be a lot of fun. Great color, the best of the bunch so far by, by leaps and bounds actually. Interesting exotic nose, kind of smells a little bit of uh, a little, what is that? A little hint of uh, black currant for sure, but also a little menthol-y like Hall's menthol, kind of, no question about that. Really weird. I don't, you know, first thing that pops in my head is lizard, but I don't even know what that means, so I'm just going <laughs> to move on. This is silky wine. Jeez. Um, it drinks well. I also find this a little bit one-dimensional. This is for Pete B, and Pete for forty bucks. I would say absolute pass. I'm not a, uh, I'm not feeling it. I mean, it, it's it's well made. Again, I don't know what it is. Maybe I'm having a bad day, but I just find these wines to be kind of one-dimensional today. There's not a lot of interest in these wines at all, and so um, 
going to pass. Going to pass. Mas to Mas Gasak from the Languedoc. Premier Cru Languedoc wine. It's a Grand Cru, excuse me. 80% Cabernet, 20% of a mixture of grapes that they don't tell you each year that are indigenous to the Languedoc region. So, Susan, I have finally done a wine that you uh, have asked for. Hopefully you're doing better than the boys today because we didn't do so well with the first three. Really nice color, as always it seems these days. Okay. Very different wine on the nose. Very earthy, very green, very interesting. Little pine coney. Smells like somebody just cleaned the floor. Nice mid palette, showing well in the finish. Solid wine, 30 bucks. It's delivering quite a bit of wine for that price. I like it. Um, I would recommend it. I, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't know. I'm, I, I think I'm in a weird mood today, but it's solid. It's a good bottle of wine, but I've got to be very honest. All four wines just basically came very standard today to me. Um, nice flavors. I would not pan any of them, but I wouldn't recommend, given the price, any of them. So, that went weird today. I'm, I'm a little caught off guard. All right, let's go to the comments. Wow, that was shocking. Huh. Sue Z says, amongst other things, Hi, Gary. I admit, I'm a troller. Sue, welcome. Roxanne says, Gary, I've been watching for months, but I'm not a troll. Not anymore. Welcome. Melissa McBrayer says, Hi, Gary. I guess I'm one of the lurkers out there. Melissa. Thanks for being on board. Bill Nelson says, Gary, super episode. If nothing else, you're Stanima, tasting eight reds and then going home and doing 12 whites. I love the big bad Zins, so I would like to visit Rosenblum's tasting room. With the gazillion wines you carry, why don't, why don't you think, you, oh, why don't think you have, oh, excuse me, I, I, I don't think you have Rosenblum. Why not? Your new format is great, and I will look for uh, one of today's whites in, for Labor Day weekend. Bill, we do carry Rosenblum. We have the Vintners Cuvée. It's eight bucks. It's really the only one that we really enjoy. We find the luxury cuvées to be solid. We're big fans of it. They come in and out. We do carry the high-end wines, but they get 93-point scores. They're gone in one day. And so kind of Rosenblum, besides the standard Zin, is in and out. So we do carry it. Russ J says, don't let the sheep leap the shepherd. Are you kidding me with that? Dude, you asked. We answered. No sheep here. And you know what they say about the shepherd? Russ. You're right, dude. I'm a real jerk. I really apologize. I was inspired by those white wines yesterday. Came back and did it today. So please, please, I apologize. You are 100% correct. Douglas says, a couple of comments and then a question for Gary. First up, can we crash your party this weekend with all 5,000 of us? Doug, you can. 343 East. My wife will kick my ass. Finally, finally, the question of the day. I had a Wine Library TV viewer send me a beautiful bottle of wine. Thank you so much. I know you asked not to mention it, so I'm not mentioning it, but I am thanking you. It's unbelievable, and I'm going to save it for a special occasion. It's really nice of you. Which made me to think, what is the nicest bottle of wine you've ever given as a gift? And, you're going to have to answer twice today, What's the nicest bottle you've ever received? I want to hear it. Tell me the story behind it. I love the interaction. Now, before I leave, there was one other interesting inner discussion on WLTV's forum. Tim F. said to Chris S. Do you think there is a big overlap of Wine Library TV viewers and Mike and the Mad Dog listeners? I've listened to the show since it started. I used to listen to Chris when he filled in for various people too. One of my funniest memories was when the, on draft day. Must have been 1989. I was driving back from a Mets game. Mets probably lost. And my brother and I were listening. And the Jets took Jeff Lagerman with their first pick. Mad Dog started off as usual. He kept saying, who the hell is Jeff Lagerman? Over and over for about an hour. Tim, Chris, the Jets have made a lot of mistakes on draft day. And I've been there for all of them, including the Lagerman one. As a matter of fact, let's look at this. 
Johnny Lamb Jones. Wide receiver, Texas. I think it's a good selection, but a very surprising one. UCLA running back, Freeman McNeil. As a season ticket holder of the Jets, I'm going to boo. Jets take the first round selection. Quarterback, no! Ken O'Brien of California Davis. Everybody said if Marino was going to be around at that time, they'd take Marino. Obviously, the Jets know something that, you know, the people up here don't. New York Jets first round selection. Fullback, oh, Roger Vick, oh. Texas a and New York Jets, first round choice. Jeff Lagerman, linebacker, Virginia. It's obvious to me right now that the Jets just don't understand what the draft's all about. <laughs> the New York Jets select Blair Thomas, running back, Penn State. The New York Jets select Johnny Mitchell, tight end, Nebraska. New York Jets select tight end from Penn State, Kyle Brady. Ladies and gentlemen, our first real upset, I think, at this point in the draft.